Yeah, I felt a huge difference, like putting on like 10, 15 pounds of muscle uh, this off season. James Wiseman is back. What's happening, everyone? This is Switch Culture. If you had stayed up last night or checked out the streams channel at Warriors vs. The World, you would have seen what I'm about to show you in real time. Oh yeah, it's no longer called Switch Culture Stream, so make sure you guys check that out. But moving on, Wiseman just had his first game last night with the Santa Cruz Warriors vs. the Stockton Kings. There is a lot to unpackage and also not unpackage with Wiseman's first appearance in 11 months, but I'll share what my first hand impressions were of the Warriors Center. Now I'll be going through today's video as if you already watched the prior video on the news of Wiseman's return. So if you haven't seen that video just yet, click the card that just appeared at the top right of the screen and after you've finished, come back and watch tonight's video. Wiseman is a once in a generation talent, physically. From last night's game, the first impression was that he looked solid, more so than he did as a rookie. As talented as Lamelo was, there were some attributes that Wiseman brought to the table that just couldn't be ignored. The Timberwolves had their eye on him for sure, but with Carl Anthony Towns, the prime stakeholder in the Minnesota Center franchise, they were not about to draft James Wiseman, who has so many overlapping attributes. The vision Bob Myers and Joe Lacob shared about the young player is what I'm sure many of us have as well. We had the championship core already in place, so what move made more sense than to add a player that complemented the team? We won already with that team, so theoretically speaking, with Wiseman, we'd only get better. The premise of what we'd be able to achieve as he develops was quite overwhelming as the Warriors sought to reignite the chemistry of the squad without KD and rebuild the dynasty. I'll be the first to admit, we were all a bit disappointed that Wiseman didn't get to play much his rookie year and was especially hampered by the injury. It's always easier to look at the cards you could have had in your hands when your hand is empty. That being said, the sheer number of Warriors fans eager to see what James Wiseman was capable of doing in his first game back from injury shows that an overwhelming majority of the fan base is full of hope for Wiseman's future. So what of Wiseman's future did we see last night? What should we unpack from last night's performance? Well, we saw a lot and also not much. Here's what I can tell you. Wiseman is every bit as talented as advertised. Let's look at the easy stuff first. In 21 minutes of playing time, Wiseman posted 18 points and 6 rebounds as the second highest scorer on the team, next to Weatherspoon. He made 7 of 13 field goals and went 2 of 2 on free throws. Let me know that 2 of the rebounds he had were offensive rebounds, which I'll get into a bit later, but that's a very important statistic. He finished the night with two fouls and a single turnover. While these numbers look great, and some might say, well, <laughs> it's just the G League, there's a whole story behind these numbers, as well as what we actually saw him do on the court. The fact that he was able to score 18 in 21 minutes speaks a lot to his offensive game. He grabbed two offensive boards, showing effort on that end, not giving up on the play, and anticipating as he should. While his positioning could use work, the issue is more than likely the fact that it's his first game back and he likely won't be jumping out of the gym just yet as he eases his way back into playing form. So what's impressive about this is not so much that he can put up 18 points in the G League, it's the fact that his first game back after a year of injury, without the experience required, he's able to immediately contribute at this level. Did I mention that he outscored both the other centers on the other team? What's crazy is the ease with which he did this against players who are primed and have been playing all season. The first quarter for Wiseman was a bit rough. He missed a few shots, had a rejection after not getting enough elevation, which is something we saw throughout the night. It really seemed a bit lost on the floor at times on defense. He was able to contest a few shots, getting the stop, and then running the floor, but didn't really seem to exert himself a whole lot. This changed as the game went on, however. At the end of each burst, of which he had four throughout the game, he was quite winded and it was obvious he needed a lot of reps. This will most definitely help with his level of engagement as at times he seemed disinterested, but you're less likely to be motivated when you're out of breath. As he got his first dunk in the game, his energy picked up. He had more confidence in his shots and was more assertive on the floor. His footwork was clearly improved and his game is still very versatile. While he didn't knock down any from distance, his shot looked good, but a recalibrated clip could clap any critic. He had some vicious throwdowns as well as a display of soft hands around the rim. 
I expected him to be a bit rusty, so the easy ones he missed, he'll for sure be able to get those next time. By the time he finished, I was convinced he has a lot more to show us once he gets settled, gets more time on the court, and plays with players and point guards that know how to take advantage of a 7 foot high flyer. His pick and roll action could use some work as he struggled to find himself open while rolling to the rim, but I suspect that was just a matter of shaking off rust. He did seem a bit slower at times, however that was to be expected. Overall, he seemed like a slower, more skilled version of who he was by the end of the fourth quarter, but with the reps he'll be getting, I expect that to change. His jump shots still look great, and if he continues to work at it, he'll be as deadly as Kevin Durant with the mid-range game. I don't say this lightly. His form, the confidence and ease with which he gets his shot, this is going to be crucial to Wiseman's development at Golden State. Last year, before it even came out, I mentioned that it would be great for Wiseman's development if he could work with Kevin Garnett. While his injury prevented that from working out, I have high hopes that the Warriors will resume that plan this year. What we shouldn't unpack from last night's game relates directly to the degree of difficulty of the game. We should understand that this is a G League game, not the NBA. We shouldn't expect that Wiseman is going to be coming back to the NBA and putting up 18 points a night when he's back on the floor with Golden State this season. That's not to say he won't once he gets his legs under him. He's clearly talented enough to do this soon enough, but that should be more than what we should hope for to close out the year. I also don't expect that he will dominate on defense just yet. He was fairly conservative in his defensive plays last night, which is quite a bit different than what we're used to seeing with him. He wasn't fouling as much and contested shots without being zealous. While opponents were still able to make some shots over him, he was able to deter a few baskets. This really wasn't a game to show what Wiseman can do as he had specific goals on the court. None of those included getting a win, so despite the loss, it was still a success. The biggest of the goals was to ensure that he didn't get any sort of injury or re-injury and would be healthy to play again on Sunday. I'm sure he will have some soreness, but other than that, nothing concerning. It'll be interesting to see how Sunday's game goes relative to last night's versus the Stockton Kings. The opponents won't really matter much, but what he does on the floor will be of much importance considering he will have gotten feedback and will likely tweak a few things. I'm quite certain they told him to go at maybe 80% tops. If everything looks good and he recovers nicely, I'm expecting to see more energy, more effort, and more dominance in Sunday's performance. My outlook for Wiseman for the future is that I expect him to finish out the year strong, improve during the offseason, climb a steep learning curve this coming year, and both he and the Warriors see a payoff the following year in year 4. Trust me, by then, no one will want to see this team. Let me know in the comments your thoughts of Wiseman's performance in his debut and whether or not you think he's a staple of the Warriors' future core. Thanks for watching. Till next time. Swish. Can't need a shit cock word. I'm a player, the real player. I don't give a prayer, man. Fuck a naysayer. I block so hard, sweetie, get served. Call me Lonzo Ball, bitches get swerved.